Hello everyone and welcome to the supplemental video. We're standing out here outside of the hedge maze uh, because I thought I'd look around at some more of this since we took a pretty direct path to get in and out of the maze. We didn't see some things in it. I mean there's really not a whole lot to see in uh, the hedge maze of Raquia, but there are maybe some things we could take a look at. For example, there are some traps uh, that you can find on the maze, especially when you're on your way back out. For some reason, a lot of those traps don't spring when you're still trying to find your way uh, to the castle, but when you're... when you're trying to make your way back out... things like that can happen. And that. And these, do, these things do hurt. So we're just going to avoid them. And one up here. Here's a little platforming thing we didn't see. Now there's really nothing around here. If I, I can go up here into the back of the maze and there's really nothing here except... Oh dear. Doesn't that look menacing? It hurts a lot. I mean, it would, it would kill us pretty quickly if uh, we just ran right into it. And now it's gone! That's like the only time this thing appears in the game. And the only, like, the only place in the maze that you see this thing. It, it's weird, there's like little traps here and there, but uh... Like, you probably won't see them. I mean, unless you want, I mean, you probably wouldn't wa have wandered around here on your way back out. Like, this is the top of the maze. If you were to look at the map, this is the very top of it. There's nothing in here. You probably wouldn't have wandered in here on your way out of the castle, because by then you probably have a more decent idea of the direction you should be going. But yeah, on your way back out, you can, you can activate all kinds of traps. Here's a peaceful place to sit. However, there are no switches on these benches. Nothing secret. Maybe that's just a red herring. Make you think there's something secret there, but there's not. This looks like there should be something here. It's like a border. It looks like it should be a trap door. It doesn't seem like there's anything happening, though. More of these. And they're not activating either? Oh no, okay, yes. That, okay, that's kind of funny. Like, I was looking at these, and then there's actually one in the middle that popped up and got me. Br that's, that's a good job, Realms of the Haunting. I kind of like that. That's pretty funny. There's a chainsaw. <gasps> what? Uh, okay, something got me. Okay, I've come back here because I want to see what got me. I think there's a spike in the ground. Yep, that's what got me last time. The chainsaw can also activate. But it looks like... Does it only go once? I guess it only activates once. No, no, it activates multiple times. Never mind that. So there are chainsaws in the hedge maze, which can also get you. But they don't seem to activate when you're... on your way to the castle. Only when you're working your way back out. Which, again, that seems kind of weird, right? You'd be more lost, you would be more uh, trying to find your way around when you're actually trying to get to the castle. Not necessarily when you're trying to get back out. But if you don't know the way around the maze, and if you didn't think to get the map, you might be spending quite a bit of time in here. And there's this thing that goes down and back up. Not sure what the point of it is, because, I mean, I can't ride it to go to the top of the hedge maze. Because that's like a ceiling, just kind of knocks me back down. Which is a shame, because I would like to run along the top of the maze. You'd think that it might block you. I'm like, you might, it might be a trap that you go to the other side of the hedge and you can't get back. But I could go to the other side, and all we are on the other side is just, on, is just here. And now I'm back where I was. And there's that thing. So what's the point of that? I don't know. But it's the only one of them in the maze that I found. 
why would they bother making this specifically for this one part? And it doesn't even it doesn't even mess you up at all in any way? I don't know. Also, hey, there are some pit traps. Watch out for pits, but I didn't, and now it's too late. And now we're down here forever, ex- oh. No, we're not. It, it's actually a very nice pit trap. It just brings you back up to the sur- oh, look at that warping over there. Look at that- that's not doing it- oh, no, that hedge is, like, warping a little bit. Yeah, look in the background. Up there. Look at that texture warping. That's real nice. Yeah, this pit trap right here is a nice one, because it it, it- it has pity on you. It lets you come back out. After you've done a few seconds of time in there. So yeah, there's a few things that you'll find in uh, in the Rockwea Hedge Maze. Just a bunch of traps that are, just don't seem to activate when you're actually going to the tower, but they are when you're coming back out. I guess Raziel just wanted to have one last game with you. Because you'd think that this would make more sense if he was uh, testing you on your way in rather than on your way out after you've already gotten the key and passed his tests. But Raziel's just funny that way, I suppose. <laughs> Alright, now let's take a look at the updated observations that we've gotten after freeing Hawk. Uh, one of the important ones is the first item that we had in the game, the shards and seals. Since uh, Hawk did tell us some things about these, we have gotten some updates. Uh, let's discuss the seals. Still can't get my head around these. Here, you have a look. What was it Hawk said? They're the broken seals of the Soul Stone? That's what he said. These are the fragments of six of the seven seals that bind the universe together. When the last is broken, the world will be plunged into darkness. If that happens, Adam, Gaul will become host to the power of all darkness. And man will be doomed. No shit. Well, yes, now we know that these seals are indeed very important. They are the seals that Florentine has been breaking over these past centuries. And there's only one left. The one that we don't have. Let's uh, reflect about these seals now that we know what they are. The fragments of six of the seven seals that bind the universe together. When the last is broken, the world will be plunged into darkness. If that happens... Gaul becomes host to the power of all darkness. Humanity will be doomed. Do I need them? Were they given to me only to get me here as I originally thought? And where the hell's the seventh seal? Well, the seventh seal, the only one left, the only thing that stands between human humanity and the darkness. Uh, we don't know where it is. We were given these by Florentine. He had no use for them anymore. Um, and Adam Randall thought that he, he did so because he was trying to get Adam to come to the house. We don't know if we actually need to use them for anything, but Adam is overwhelmed now that he actually knows how important these things are. One other item in this section that's gotten updated is the green crystal. Let's talk about that. Rebecca, any thoughts on what this is? This is a shard of the soul stone. Like the stone your father had around his neck. The only substance that will grant us entry into the realm of Shoal. We need one each. You asked Hawk yourself. Remember? Oh yeah, we did. Uh, Adam, uh, Rebecca was just uh, reciting what Hawk had told us. Now that we actually know what it is we need the green crystals for, we need them to enter Shoal, which is where the Soul Stone is. And that does sound like an important thing, so... We're going to have to keep our eyes out for them. I don't know what happens to the crystals that we use, because technically we have picked up two crystals at this point. The one that we used to uh, reach the Gnarl, and the one that we picked up to uh, get into the portal that uh, took us back to the tower. So technically, we, we've had two of them. I don't know if it still counts as us having two, or if we need to get more. Maybe the one we used to get to the Gnarl. Maybe we don't have that one anymore. Maybe we came back without it. Alright, magic items. Uh, there's one important one. The Shrive. 
This one really hasn't gotten too many updates throughout the game, which is strange because everyone keeps saying that this is really important. So let's, uh, let's discuss, discuss it. The Shrive. Rebecca, something seems to be happening. What? What's happening? Well, the design's the same as the marks on my hands. It's as if the brands and the Shrive are... I... What is it, Adam? I know this is going to sound odd, but... Well, it, it feels like the Shrive's communicating with me. With the brands. I can't explain it. Communicating? Are you sure? You think I'm losing it? No, I don't. I believe you. You aren't going mad. You're changing. And it's leading to something. J just be ready for it when it happens. The information that Hawk imparted to me was important. Most of it involved the Shrive. Listen close, Adam Randall. The Shrive is part of the Eternal Sword, the Dragon Sword, which was taken from the Soul Stone by Florentine. Keep it close. You must be prepared. Prepared for what? We don't know. We are looking for the Dragon Sword, which is why Hawk said we had to go to Aqua. Um, but the Shrive is apparently activating and uh, communicating with the brands on Adam's hands. And Adam is getting rightly freaked out about it. He doesn't know what's going on. Rebecca doesn't know a whole lot uh, herself about it either. Just that we need to keep on the lookout for something. Let's reflect on our, our talking hands. Something's happening. The Shrive is communicating with me. No, no, that's not right. Not with me, with the brands. Something's passing between us. What the hell's happening to me? The Shrive. It's part of the Dragon Sword that was taken from the Soul Stone by Florentine. It wants me. I can feel it. Something's happening. The Shrive. I can't quite explain it, but the damn thing's communicating with me. No. That's not right. Not with me. With the brands. Something's passing between them. And I'm right in the middle of it. What the hell's happening to me? Oh, Adam feels like a third wheel. The Shrive and the brands are getting along just fine. And all Adam wants to do is be in on the fun. But he's being left out. He's being left out. Let's go to our observations. Uh, one of them that's been updated has been Alf. Let's reflect on Alf. So Alf is a product of the Soul Stone. That's what Hawk said. If the Soul Stone is the lock, then Alf's sword is the key, part of the Shrive. That means that Alf's sword was eternity. It would seem some events have been brought about too soon. Certain prophecies. That's why Alf is here, to help put mankind's future back on course, to restore the equilibrium. Alf spirit, that is. He fell long ago, defending the Soul Stone with his Falshir knights. Felt a Florentine and his demonic hordes at Falshir Field. Now only his spirit remains. Although powerful, he cannot take up his sword once again. Apparently it's down to me. Great. That's just great. Right, so Alf did indeed die in the battle against the Templars, trying to defend the Soul Stone, uh, but they failed, and Alf apparently wielded the Sword of, of Eternity, and that's what we're trying to find now, to take up where Alf left off, it seems. So, the dagger we picked up was Alf's dagger, but Eternity was also Alf's sword. I guess the reason we couldn't take Eternity, though, was because it did not have a special anti-Belial shot which is what saved us with the dagger. Though, since no one knows where Eternity is, it's kind of, I still don't really get the part where we picked it up. Like, that couldn't have actually have been there, because no one knows where the sword is, and we figure it's now in Aqua. So, like, that's... I don't know, was the sword actually there, or was that just, like, something to tantalize you? It does seem kind of confusing. I don't see why that would be there in the first place. Let's just pretend it wasn't. Uh, we can all, I believe, also Rockwia is updated, the place that we have just left. Rebecca, is it me? Or is there something not quite right in Rockwia? There are physical signs of decay in Rockwia, Adam, even pollution. Something is affecting the realm's laws of existence. Why doesn't that surprise me? 
And that was mentioned in the video, but I still don't know what's being referred to. I mean, maybe it's the monsters showing up in Raquia? Maybe they're not supposed to be there? Aside from that, I don't know what this is referring to, but I guess we can assume that the laws of order are beginning to fall apart now that six of the seals have been broken. Things are just barely being held together. Something else that's been updated has been Raphael. Uh, let's reflect on Raphael. Raphael? What is he of the same blood as Alf? Brothers? No. Hawk refuted it. Of the same blood, yes. What did he mean by that? Place your trust in Raphael. His names are many. Same blood. Again, the only thing I can think of is that this is a, a meta joke for Raphael and Alf being played by the same actor. It doesn't seem to be another reason for it. And I also think something has been added uh, down here. We previously had the Chamber of the Soul Stone, but now we have the Soul Stone. Let's talk about it. So Hawk explained the mystery surrounding the Soul Stone. It's part of the law governing all things, isn't it? It's a channel, if you like, attracting all living thoughts and giving them form. Evil thoughts manifest as demons, and where pure thoughts are concerned, we have angels. Come on. Those are mankind's terms, right? Yes. Man's terms. So where does God, the Is, uh, the supreme being, come into all of this? The Is, or God, is the supreme embodiment of all man's pure thoughts, but without form. What about the other? The evil? Satan, Lucifer, all the other names for evil, Yes, that power exists. It's the sum total of all the thoughts of all living things evil. Then in my humble opinion, Rebecca Trevizard, we're shafted. Adam, that's why you're here. Well, we can see what uh, Adam Randall thinks of humanity in general. Uh, and this sort of reiterates what we saw written on the wall previously, that... Uh, all forces of good and evil are just the manifestations of the thoughts of humanity. And we have, we have found that um, the way it works is those thoughts get channeled through the soul stone, which is the thing that spawns angels and demons. Um, and that includes Belial, who was spawned by the thoughts of Florentine. So maybe we'll be encountering this stone later on. They say it's in Shoal. We haven't been there yet. Uh, but it does seem like an important thing in, in the story. Uh, so I think that's, yeah, that's everything for the supplementary video. This seems shorter than usual. I don't know if it was, but it kind of seemed that way. Not that, not too much extra content to look at this time round. That'll change next time, as we will have some extra reading to do in the next supplementary video. I'll see you then.